All right, so today we're going to look at hypothesis testing when you have a Poisson distribution. For example, suppose I want to know whether or not the average number of lightning strikes in a building is going to be, say, 25 times per year. So, so as with other hypothesis testing, the key question we want to ask is, what observations will be so improbable that we would reject the null hypothesis on that basis? Uh, now, we can model the situation using a Poisson distribution. Uh, you may want to check that. Uh, you may want to convince yourself that this really is a situation where the Poisson distribution is appropriate. Uh, uh, so we want to find out whether there's an average of 25 lightning strikes in one year, and we might determine, for example, that the probability of having, say, 15 lightning strikes is going to be very small, and we might take this as an observation that is too improbable to occur by chance. Uh, but for consistency, we'd also have to accept other improbable events, 14 lightning strikes in a year, 13, and so on, down to zero lightning strikes in one year. And all of these we would have to consider as too improbable to occur by chance, and all of these we'd have to regard as grounds for rejecting the null hypothesis. So this suggests that we might take as our rule uh, if we see 15 or fewer lightning strikes in one year as being too improbable to support the null hypothesis. And we can calculate that probability. It's about 1 in about 45. Again, for consistency, we'd also have to regard other outcomes as being too improbable to support the null hypothesis. Uh, for example, 36 lightning strikes, 37, 38, and so on up. In other words, this is going to give us another set of events that we would consider too improbable, and 36 or more lightning strikes in a year, and our probability is going to be about 1 in 45 again. So if we put this together, this gives us a rule for when to reject the null hypothesis an average of 25 lightning strikes in one year. And that rule is going to look like this. Uh, if we see 15 or fewer, or 36 or more lightning strikes in one year. Now, the important question is, what's our level of significance for this rule? Well, we can calculate that. Uh, the probability that the null hypothesis will produce an event that causes us to reject the null hypothesis is going to be the sum of those two tail probabilities, about 0.0447, just under 5%, which is what we like as a minimal level of significance for our test of hypothesis. So our rule seems to be at least a reasonable starting point. So if I observe 15 or fewer, or 36 or more lightning strikes in one year, I am willing to reject the null hypothesis, the average is 25, at a level of significance that is just around our standard 5% level. But we have another way of looking at hypothesis testing, and that's to look at the p-value. Now the p-values are going to be a little bit more complicated for a Poisson distribution. And to see how that might work, suppose we actually make an observation, say that there's 12 lightning strikes in one year, and how can we find the p-value? Well, there's actually two slightly different approaches. One is to do things the right way, and the other one is to do things the easy way. And fortunately, they give us almost exactly the same answer. So we'll do things the right way first. Uh, first, suppose we use our observation as the grounds for rejecting the null hypothesis that there are an average of 25 lightning strikes in one year. Now, what this means is that we deem this event, 12 per year, as too improbable to occur if the null hypothesis is true. Well, if the average number of lightning strikes is in fact 25, the probability of observing just 12 is about 0 0.00173. And we have now set our level. This is too improbable, and that means that anything that is less probable than that, we would also consider as grounds for rejecting our null hypothesis. So what are those other events? Well, they're going to be things like finding, uh, finding 11 lightning strikes in a year, or observing 10, or fewer. We can also look at observing many more lightning strikes, for example, 40 lightning strikes in a year. Under the null hypothesis, we will observe 40 lightning strikes in a year with probability very, very small. And so, again, we would deem this as being too improbable to support the null hypothesis. And we can find our other events, 41 and so on. And if we put all of these events together, then we must reject the null hypothesis if we see 12 or fewer lightning strikes in one year, 
or 40 or more lightning strikes in one year. And so the probability that the null hypothesis produces something, either 12 or fewer, or more than 40, that causes us to reject the null hypothesis is going to be the sum of those two probabilities, and that's going to be what our p-value is. Now, this is actually a fair amount of work, so we might ask ourselves, is there some easier way of doing this? And we should find the p-value that way, but in practice we'll make the following simplification. Now, we still need to calculate the probability of observing 12 or fewer lightning strikes because our actual observation is 12 lightning strikes and our probability there, 0.00141. And we'll make the following simplification. All of those improbable events have probability 0.00141. That's our 12 or fewer lightning strikes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that there's some other events that are equally or less probable than this 12 lightning strikes that we actually observed, and their total probability will also be 0.00141. And so this is comparable to using the two tails of the normal distribution for calculating our p-value. And the good thing about that is if we know that we have two tails, both of which have the same probability, we can calculate the total probability as just twice what one of them is. And so that gives us our p-value for the observation. And what we might say is that we would reject the null hypothesis that there are an average of 25 lightning strikes per year on the basis of observing 12 with p equal to 0.00282.